Jorge, there is some footage of you. I think I saw it on Fox, and I think I saw you being interviewed. Uh, I don't. I, I think it was on Fox. Maybe it was. Um, maybe it was the Daily Caller. But you were at the border. Different story. People were jumping subjects here, mm -hmm. and you were doing some filming, and you were approached by a coyote with a gun. Yeah. So, so I'll, I'll kind of holy make, shit. Yeah. So let me give you guys a, a, a quick breakdown, a little context on that story. So about three. Yeah. Weeks please, ago, please paint that picture. Yeah. Please. Yeah. So I'm in. Um, so we, you know, our sources are saying, hey, head to Yuma, Arizona. So for, you know, for those who don't know, all of our reporting on the border has been basically just Texas focused. So we haven't been to this part of Yuma. Our sources tell us go to Yuma because we're seeing all types of different nationalities, you know, kind of cross through a sector called the gap. So we go to this gap and the, the reason by nationalities, you mean, what do you mean all different you, by that? You mean even more than Latins more than like, yeah. So when I got there, I was meeting men from Uzbekistan, from Georgia, from India, from Romania, from Brazil. I mean, I was like, Whoa, we have just did it. We've never seen so many different nationalities kind of taking all this one round, especially coming from, I mean, I, to be honest, I didn't even know what Uzbekistan was till I met these guys. I had to like research. I was like, wait, okay. So, <laughs> We go to this part. You thought it was a made-up country. Maybe <laughs> it is. Um, so the reason why they call this one sector the gap is because there's literally a gap of a border wall and and the the Mexican town across Yuma, Arizona, is Los Algodones. So when I'm when I was there, I was fascinated by this one route because we would actually get video footage of of these of these human smugglers and they'll walk up right to the middle of that Mexico U.S. boundary in the middle of that. They call it the Colorado River. There's there's no water in the river, but they call it the Colorado River. And they'll literally take the, the cash payment from the migrants right there in the wide open before officially smuggling them into the U.S. So I found that fascinating because you can't, you didn't really get that in Texas. What we did get in Texas was, you know, the boat rafts, but we didn't get like actual. And you, and you saw and you saw evidence of payment through the bracelets. Oh, with the bracelets. But right. we, didn't, we didn't get to see the cash, you know, the cash transactions. I was fascinated by that. So I spent a whole week documenting that. I came back home and I got three. These three other reporters called me and said, hey, Jorge, come back to Yuma. We want, to, we want to document some of these human smugglers. I'm like, no problem. So I go back to Yuma, and it was a Friday morning. It's so around 7 in the morning. We get to the gap. So I, I tell one of the reporters, his name is Justin. I say, hey, Justin, I'm going to go down to the midsection. Can you please come with me? I'm going to need an extra body down there. Because the thing is, when I was down there last week, and, and I kind of came back to the Yuma side, even Border Patrol was like, hey, man, like we don't even go down there because we're like afraid that we're going to get stabbed by these guys. He's like, so we're like, don't, don't go down there. But I went back down there with, with, with my guy, Justin. And when we were filming this one human smuggler, now what made this already kind of a red flag is when we're down there and you see a human smuggler, they're always smuggling multiple people, at least three to four to five, you know, up to 10, 15, 20 people. So it's always multiple people. How do you know that, who the smuggler flag, is? How do you know who the smuggler is? Are they wearing different clothes or they're different ethnicity? How do you know which one is the smuggler? I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just obvious. Like they're, they're, they're the ones who are like, directing where the migrants to go and they have like no backpack on them so you know they're, okay. they're the ones who are, who are giving them the directions guiding them so like i said you're always seeing these smugglers bring multiple people so the red flag here was that this 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 one guy which we found out is mid-level to high level cartel according to border patrol but so we see this one human smuggler only smuggling one male this one male that he was bringing in had a big black backpack that border patrol was telling us they think there was a fentanyl in there so that already was a red flag. So we see these two guys coming. Obviously, one of them is a human smuggler, and we're taking video. And the human smuggler is taking a cash payment as they're walking. And he's taking a cash payment. And to, to be honest, it completely slipped my mind because I was so fascinated by the video. It slipped my mind to be like, wait a minute. What's going to happen when he comes to the boundary and he sees me filming? Like, I just forgot that you know we're, we're going to have an altercation. So we're filming him. He obviously gets to the boundary. He notices that I'm filming, and his tone just – it was very aggressive. It was in Spanish. So the guy freaks out. Well, wait, wait, so real quick. So sorry. When you say the boundary, is it a no man's land? It's like not Mexico yes. or the United States. It's just. Yeah, it's kind of like a no man's land. Like there's like not a real boundary there to, to, to like, you know, you can walk through, walk out. But we're, you're kind of in the middle of it. What they okay, call and the, if you look back, how far back is the, is how, how far back is the United States? How far back is a 7-Eleven? I would uh, uh well, back to the U.S. I would say less than. I mean, I think um, I would say like 300, 200 feet. Okay, so, and, and then are there any? Is there anyone over there, or you guys are just basically now out in the desert by yourself? We're basically out there, kind of on on our own. We do okay. call this kind of a no man's land, just because of you know you could just walk walk through and out. So you know we're filming. The guy obviously sees that we're filming. 
and is very angry, is, is asking us while we're filming who we were. And then as he's saying this, he puts his hand on his gun and just was getting aggressive. And then, so I stopped filming because I was already scared. And I stopped filming. And as soon as I stopped, he tells me a couple of times, put that phone on the ground, put that phone on the ground. And so I'm assuming that he was going to steal the phone to basically take away the video evidence. So I don't know if this was like a, a, a fight or flight moment, but as soon as he told me that, my mind went blank and all I did was turn around and I just ran right back to Yuma. And I said, I kind of told myself, I'm like, you know what? And where it, was Justin? Justin ran too. So Justin is, is running with me. So, and I, I was the one who, who ran first and Justin followed my lead. But my, my kind of thinking was, I was like, you know what? If this guy shoots, then he shoots, but the ball is in, is in his court. Let's see if he's going to do it. But all I knew is I wasn't going to stay there and I definitely wasn't going to give a cartel guy my phone. So, you know, I run, I get back to safety in the Yuma, the, the border wall, and the two other journalists that we came with, you know, run up to us. They're like, hey, what happened? What happened? We saw that. And we, we told him what happened. And then I, um, I looked When back you turned back around, did you see him? When you stopped running, you looked no, back? No, no. I just, I didn't even look back, man. You know, I was just like, boom. And as soon as I got back to Yuma, I, I looked through the video. And then there was a part where I could, I could get a perfect frame of him with the gun. So I screenshotted the, the, the you know, the video picture. And I sent the picture to a reporter. His name is Julio Rosas of Town Hall Media. Julio Rosas is a great friend of mine who's always on the front lines. We're basically brothers. Uh, we, we, we met during the, the BLM ride. So, you know, when you when you cover those moments with somebody, you grow you grow pretty close pretty quick. So I, I sent it to Julio. Julio gives me a call, make sure that I'm all right. Then I sent that photo to Bill Malusian of Fox News. And Armenian. Bill, that sounds Armenian. That sounds Armenian. No, no, white guy, white guy. Bill oh, Malusian. Damn. Um, yeah, damn. So I sent it to Bill Malusian. Bill, Bill goes back, is messaging me back and says, okay, man, you got to post that on Twitter. So... I go on Twitter, I post it, it goes crazy viral, of course, and then, you know, I go back to the border the very next, we go back to the same spot early in the morning next next day, which is Saturday, we go back, and Border Who, Patrol- Who, you and Justin go back together? Yes, and then Border Patrol comes up to us and says, hey, were you those guys that encountered that armed human smuggler? We said yes, and then he was like, our whole Border Patrol sector in Yuma had a whole briefing on that photo. And they're like, that, that photo was so good for evidence. He's like, we're actually sending our border, our, they call it a board tack, which is the border patrol tactical unit that is actually armed. So while we were down there, we got to see the armed uh, border patrol agents actually running investigations. And according to our sources, they told us that that guy that we ran into was a mid-level to high-level cartel member. And they believe the individual that he brought in brought in large amounts amount of fentanyl. That's why he was armed. That's why he was only smuggling one guy. So very, you know, I'm just going to be straight up, uh, you know, very scary situation. I've never been in, you know, I've been in some close kind of moments, you know, covering rides, covering borders, but nothing where I was kind of front to face with a cartel member and he was threatening me to shoot me and he was threatening to steal my phone. So I've never encountered anything even remotely close to that moment.